This week, a Ukraine special. They want the freedom to be able to move to cleaner energy, and they're going to. With surging energy prices and sanctions on hydrocarbons, is it time to reconsider nuclear power? Best time to have done this would have been 20 years ago. Um, next best time is starting today. The energy transition has become a weapon. That's one consequence of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Leaders in Brussels, Berlin, Paris and Warsaw woke up to a new reality in which spending up to $1 billion per day on Russian fossil fuels meant financing the missiles exploding in Kyiv. Germany is an example of a major now deployment of renewables way beyond what they thought they were going to do on the current schedule. Volkswagen has drafted a plan and it's already started to shift the power plant from coal to gas. Uh, the goal was to reduce CO2 emissions by about 60 percent. But that plan has to be reviewed at the moment because it's unclear how stable the supplies will be going forward. The green transition is in constant search for baseload power, which can pick up the slack from less reliable renewable sources. According to its proponents, nuclear could both serve that role and relieve some of the pressure caused by the energy crisis. It does take a while. I think it's probably the slowest and most expensive way to make really cheap electricity, as opposed to, uh, say, wind and solar, which are very fast and often cheap ways to make expensive electricity. So it's a matter of uh, investing now for a really good situation later. Fortunately, the nuclear fleet in France is severely underused. That can be fixed with better management of the French system. They could get maybe even 30% more electricity out of the exact same reactors. That means France can bear the lion's share of the burden of decarbonizing a lot of Europe off of Russian fossil fuels in the next few years. And then countries like Germany certainly could just order fuel to keep operating millions of people's worth of electricity that could take around 20, 25 percent of the Russian gas they're using today off of their system. Probably the biggest single thing that can help at this point. Well, Mark, what you're saying speaks to kind of the divergence from a policy standpoint we've seen within different European countries, France that has been more open to nuclear power and Germany, which has shifted sharply away from it. How much of a mistake is that looking like in hindsight? A mistake implies that it wasn't intentional by German leaders to get onto Russian fossil fuels and off of their own nuclear power, it's looking really terrible, not just on the cost. Mm. I mean, the replacement power is about 10 times as expensive as the ongoing cost of their relatively young nuclear plants. So just economically, it's it's bizarre. But in terms of policy, it's been it's been devastating. Early on in, in the war in Ukraine, Russia took control of a nuclear power plant, and that raised some serious alarm bells. What are your ideas around that? Well, we knew that nuclear plants were built tough, but I don't think any of us dreamed you could have a tank battle for a nuclear plant in a parking lot and the nuclear plant could just operate straight through without missing a beat. I wish we hadn't learned it. Now we have. I don't know if we would have done the same thing and kept the plant on the whole way, but you wouldn't want to do that to an oil refinery. Let me let me tell you that. We knew that nuclear plants are designed to be hit with aircraft, for example. We didn't know if the professionalism typically seen in a nuclear plant would extend to the staff operating and keeping the plant safe through combat. But I guess we've learned that perverse lesson and Ukraine remains almost completely reliant on their nuclear fleet to keep the lights on during the war. How do you see nuclear fitting in more broadly to the green transition? You say that it's slow, it's expensive, it takes a while to ramp up. So how large a role can it really play? Once you have it, it's the cheapest and best. So for example, Finland had a had a terrible time building a nuclear plant from 2004 to now, 18 years. That's not acceptable. The day it came into service, imports of power uh, sharply dropped in Finland, prices sharply dropped, carbon emissions sharply dropped, and that plant's going to last for 100 years. So you see, it's a little bit of a paradox. It's expensive to start. It's hard to decide on. When you do and you build it, there's nothing like it. Best time to have done this would have been 20 years ago. Hmm. Um, next best time is starting today. All right. On that note, we will leave it. Thank you so much to Mark Nelson, Managing Director at Radiant Energy Group.